So I have heard people say, uh, we don't know who to believe. We don't know what to believe because some, you know, everybody lies. Um, everybody has a slant. And it seems to me like there are some people, and I hope they're not a lot, but who are trying to figure out who the good guys are mm -hmm. so that they can be on that side. But they're right. not sure. And some people, yeah. I think, shrug their shoulders and give up and think, I can't know, it's impossible. And, and that is exactly how uh, misinformation becomes successful. Um, if you look at the case of the Russian you know, military downing the Boeing MH17 uh, flight from Amsterdam um, to, I think they were flying to Bangkok or um, somewhere to the uh, uh, Southeast Asia um, from the European perspective. <laughs> it's uh, West, Southwest. Yeah, Malaysia. <laughs> from, right. from, from America. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, when that happened, at first there were pictures of the Russian military with, you know, happily taking pictures with teddy bears that, you know, fell out from the plane that exploded. And then, you know, they were so happy they downed the Ukrainian plane. Turned out that's not a Ukrainian plane. And then, you know, the Russian news outlets became pouring various and conflicting versions of what happened. First, you know, Ukrainian jets destroyed it. Second, it was the Ukrainian, you know, anti-missile system that downed it. Then something else, and then something else. And then, you know, it gets you to the point where you hear so many conflicting thing, things, you know, our attention span is limited. So the brain says, I'm giving up. Similar tactic has been used, I think, in this war and, you know, in any issue where Russia has been involved. They disseminate various narratives, conflicting narratives, trying to muddy the waters. And then the people are like, well, we don't know what the truth is. The truth is somewhere in the middle. Um, the fact is, you know, the truth, the truth is where the facts are. And it's not between a truth and a lie. Um, and uh, the facts of the war in Ukraine is, uh, you know, Ukraine is a peaceful, democratic country, which has no, um, you know, no policy of aggression against any of its neighbors. And it was not preparing any attacks. You know, there were no indication of any sort of um, uh, aggressive behavior from the army, from the government, from anyone. Um, and Russian army attacked. Um, so the fact is, you know, we have Russian troops on Ukrainian territory. You know, what other evidence do you need to prove the fact of the aggression, right? Um, <laughs> and then, you know, the Russian narrative about this is completely wild. If you, if you listen to what they're telling to their own population, you know, it's like Ukraine never existed, you know, denying basically uh, nationhood to Ukraine and uh, you know Ukrainians are Nazis and they have like some deep fake videos of like the Nazi swastika in uh, my dad from he's in Russia and he sent me this picture and he's like look you're Nazis in Kiev and, uh, and he sends me a picture it's from a shopping mall and it's a uh, red carpet and there's a heart <laughs> you know it, it was shot on like February 16th you know two days after Valentine's Day. So clearly this was like a Valentine's Day thing. And what Russians did is they painted over like on, on that red carpet, you know, they deep faked that there is a, there is a Nazi uh, swastika that's there and a heart. Like how, how does, like the heart was never, you know, a symbol right. in, in the Nazi sort of like a um, repertoire or whatever yeah. narrative. And then he sent me some like World War II pictures of Kiev under Nazi occupation, which, you know, is true. But like, and then um, the um, success of the Russian propaganda is that it uses, you know, part truths and then just like turns them into whatever narrative that's convenient for them. Uh, you know, you could take a Russian city under Nazi occupation and, you know, like you, you, nobody in their sane mind would 
think of presenting that as evidence, you know, Russians are Nazis. It's, um, it's, it's ridiculous, but, you know, no such rules for Russian um, media and propaganda machine. And that's, that's the reason why um, there was some, so they, they've released a lot of these um, conflicting narratives. Like for example, one more example that I was um, confronted with and I didn't know about it, so I didn't know how to respond to it, was about how um, Ukrainian uh, border guards are racist because um, in the first days of the war, there were you know, hundreds of thousands of people going through uh, border crossings, which are designed for, I don't know, a couple thousand people per day. Um, and, um, and then there was a Russian journalist who was interviewing um, students from India and Africa and uh, presenting this as a racist side, for, side of the story because they weren't being allowed through fast enough. Um, the you know the fact of the story is that there was a list of priority um, uh, people for crossing. So it was women with small children, you know, women with children, um, women without children, and then everybody else. Um, and that is why you know people who even arrived there first, they were forced to wait. You know, if you're if you're a guy, <laughs> like you're you know. A student from India, but you're a guy, and you you arrive there, and then you you might think you know oh you know they're racist towards me because like there is this lady who you know just arrived and I'm I've been here, and she's been let through, and you know what's happening here, and that's these are the types of narratives that Russia manufactures and generates, and and then some of the media picks it up. Uh, in the United States, in European outlets. Um, without the context and without you know doing real background research i think um and a lot of people i think don't have the time to do it or they don't have enough resources to to do it and that's very harmful for um basically uh for for the truth <laughs> right <laughs> Um, so racism isn't inconceivable, right? It can exist anywhere at any time. You know, if you look throughout the world, you can find, you know, racism in people. But right. what I notice about this situation is it seems very much in Russia's interest to point something out, whether it happened right. or not. And sometimes it even may have happened. But for Russia, it's most important to point it out, highlight it make it as big of a story as possible in order to create to humanize in people's mind right to about who the good guys are yeah exactly and this is um this is their you know and and when you create that kind of situation they've already created this in russia you know so they've uh sold this war to russian and uh, to russian population and most Russians support it, even though they don't want to fight in it, but they're okay with, you know, somebody fighting uh, the war on their behalf. Um, and they've, um, the propaganda on the Russian TV has been demonizing Ukrainians to the extent that, you know, when they, when Russian troops are here, the, um, the massacres, you know, of civilians um, that, that we saw in the northern outskirts of Kiev, they're the outcome of, uh, of this type of narrative that, you know, Ukrainians are not quite people, they're evil, you know, must be destroyed, you know. <laughs> and um, um, they haven't been this um, crude in their news, you know, that's, that's offered to, um, to the West, to Europe, to European outlets, they're a lot more um, careful, I would say, you know, they're yeah. not so outrageous, but the tactics are the same. Um, it is propaganda, which takes, you know, a fact, uh, removes it from its context and, uh, and transforms it into the story that they don't want to sell that, you know, they're here liberating Ukrainians from, you know, Ukrainians because, and then, <laughs> I mean, it's just nonsense that they try to defend by just demonizing Ukraine, making, making Ukrainians look like, you know, the, the 
the vilest of, of all people that, uh, you know, the world would be better off without Ukraine. That's, that's their goal. Yeah, I think that, yeah, we definitely see a softer version here. Um, I don't see the, the crazy Russian version, I think, that you're alluding mm -hmm. to here um it probably yeah, you wouldn't because that's uh you wouldn't accept it right it's uh, right. it's much it's much more subtle right <laughs> you know they will probably uh they will release news about um you know unfair treatment of you know some groups of population of corruption uh you know whatever whatever negative news they can magnify they will 